You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lucas's Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. Let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. My downer mood is short-lived as I feel something touch my leg. It's Lucas's hand, and he's rubbing it slowly. It feels hesitant, and when I look, in his, when I look at his face, it's clear that he's unsure about whether it's a good idea. Costia notices right away and decides to focus his attention elsewhere, instead deciding that people walking past the cafe door are suddenly much more interesting than what's happening in front of him. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Joshua and Henry have fully given up on their conversation or just watching the two of us. The canine even meets my eyes and gives me a wink. Their stares are making this much harder, but it does are much harder, but it doesn't look easy for Lucas either, and he hasn't even noticed the attention. He's now just resting his hand on my thigh, and his face looks as, looks red and looks like a red and black cake. Red and black cake. The color mixing together in a wonderful sweet view that has me swallowing my swallowing any words I could possibly say. But he doesn't pull away and his eyes say against my own. This whole situation feels a little too intimate for such a public environment, but I don't know if I had the willpower to stop him even if I wanted to. Things were hard at first. Aura helped, but it wasn't the same. I was really I was really mean to him, but he always was patient with me. I told you before, but he's like family. But then he hesitates against he hesitates again, and for the first time since since this started, his eyes flick over to our other member, which we've sadly turned into a third wheel. But then you showed up, and it got easier. I don't know why I'm saying this, but thank you. A lot, that's all. Sorry. It's no problem, really. I, uh, really enjoy our time together. This is the most embarrassment I've ever felt, and it's not even because of how public how public this is. It's bad enough, but it's the way that Lucas's eyes light up that makes me that makes me want to find a hole to climb into it. I'm I'm glad Lucas found someone as good as you, Wallace. Huh? Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say that you two are very good for each other. Lucas needs good friends. The look about that makes the fox's ears press down and his hand leaves my leg, returning to his own lap. He stares at it. He stares at it, and there's something solemn in it about his expression that leaves me confused. I wonder if this is about Costia leaving when they were younger. We haven't even had any of our chocolate yet, but I believe I have to go. It's beginning to get dark, and it's and it's a bit of a trip home. I hope you don't mind me abandoning you all so soon. No, oh, I'm sorry. We just got so distracted, and I do not apologize. I had a good time. We should do this more, and this is a love but this is a lovely place, and I rarely get to go out with people who treat me just like a friend. The last person to do that was Helena, and we still weren't particularly close. Oh, well, of course we can do this more. Do you want us to uh, walk home with you? It won't be a problem, right, Lucas? The fox doesn't give an answer outside of a short nod of his, a nod of his head. He's still looking down at his lap, but he flicks his eyes up to my own, and I, my own enough notices it. He flicks his eyes up to my own and notices me staring and gives me a glimpse of a smile. Do not fret, do not fret yourself, friend. I would be happier if you two stayed here and enjoyed your time together. So promise me you will do that instead. We promise. Lucas's interruption is unexpected, but it causes the husky to smile brighter than I've ever seen before. I don't quite understand these two's relationship, but whatever the fox just did, Costia loved it. Then until then, goodbye, my friends. Wallace, I'd like for you to message me later. I'd love to talk. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, I'd love to talk. You too, Lucas. No need to be a stranger after all this time. Right, I I'll try. That's all I can ask. With that, he pulls away and heads out the door, only stopping to give Henry and Joshua a wave, to which the canine gives him a much more sultry wink than the one he gave me, much to Henry's dismay. The cheetah looks close to fainting as he, catch it, as he catches it, but Joshua just mutters something to him, and both of them give a burst of uproarious laughter. The two of them are like a tornado together. Joshua seems like a bad influence, but in a good way. It's hard to explain. So, you know, water time. <clears throat> that just leaves Lucas and me alone at this table. We still have our little pouches filled with chocolate in front of us, and that causes Lucas to look confused. <coughs> he left his chocolate behind. Should we return it to him? I think he wanted us to have it. I don't think he expected to get it back. Oh, right. I'll have to thank him later. 
Yeah. Lucas looks around for a moment before grabbing the butt of his chair and sliding it closer to me. He isn't close enough for our legs to be touching, but it doesn't make me feel a little warm in the face. I don't like being so far. When my parents and I spend time together, we're almost always on the couch, together on the couch. But I'm not your family. It's a weak excuse and my voice is faint. Lucas looks more confused at my meekness than what I'm saying. I feel just as comfortable around you as them. You're like Aura, but different. He's like a brother while you're... Ah, oh, forget it. There's a sudden snappy tone, but he doesn't shuffle away again. He just looks embarrassed and a little annoyed. I don't think it's I don't think it's at me, but sometimes it's a little hard to tell with Lucas. Some drinks for your little date? Joshua puts two large cups of what looks to be a frozen chocolate slushy. It smells heavenly and it makes my nose tingle with the scent of cinnamon. The spicy scent I've come to associate with the fox next to me. Lucas only looks at the canine with suspicion. We're not on Yeah, yeah. Save it for someone who believes you. These are just a little treat from me, welcoming you to our establishment. You'll come back often, right? I look at Lucas, wanting his answer more than anything else. After all, that's why we're here today. I wanted him to have another chance at this place. I think we will. This place is quiet and the people here are nice. Most of them are. Ouch, I wasn't trying to be unfriendly. I can be, a very, I can be very friendly if you want. Lucas just ignores him, but Joshua looks satisfied with that. He doesn't look too inter interested in flirting with either of us like he did with Costia. I don't think it's because we're not his type, either. I'm pretty sure he already has the idea of two of us together and decided on... I'm pretty sure he has. He already has the idea of the two of us together decided on, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Especially after Lucas's reaction to just a kiss. It's not my problem, though, right now. It's just time for me to enjoy the rest of my evening with Lucas. It might not be a date, as much as I secretly wish it was, but it's still a very pleasant time. There's a feeling deep in my stomach that things are about to get a lot worse, and I don't know why. It's just a it's just a block of lead. It's just it's just a block of lead is just clogging me up. I just hope this isn't as much of a bad open omen as I think it is. We stayed there and chatted until the sun started dropping. Eventually, Bruce returned for the much busier evening shift. He looked surprised to see us back so early and said so. He also commented that he's glad that we had our first date here, to which Lucas snapped at him, much to his amusement. He gave me what I can only assume to be an approving nod before going behind the counter. It was embarrassing, but nowhere near as bad as when the two when the two of the Siamese cat sisters decided to sit with us, Ashley and Mia. Their third sister, Courtney, couldn't make it. Ashley said as soon as they saw us yesterday, they wanted to introduce themselves, but we disappeared before they could. She then proceeded to absolutely gush about how cute we were, despite our protests. It's like nothing. It's like nothing could even penetrate her ears. Me, on the other hand, was much quieter and would only comment when addressed by her sister, though she did spark up a conversation with Lucas when Ashley went to get some coffee. Her much more toned-down personality was much easier for the fox to handle, and he seemed to genuinely enjoy her company. I even felt a little left out. I didn't really mind because he looked to be having a great time. It's not a look I see on him often, but when it does, I don't want it to leave, and it makes all the face-burning humiliation worth it. They sat with us until we couldn't stay any longer asking us to return soon, to which Bruce echoed as we passed. I've never been somewhere so welcoming, and Lucas, Lucas looked to be in shock and awe that there were places like this. We barely spoke until we were nearly back at the apartment building, and our little bags of chocolates had barely been touched. We just walked together, in days' silence. It wasn't until I saw our building in the distance did words finally come to me. That was interesting. More like exhausting. So you know, water time. All right, y'all, and we are back. But it was fun, right? It sounded like you and Mia got along well. That's only because she went. She wasn't screaming in my ear like the rest of them. I don't think Bruce was screaming in your ear. He just looked happy to see us. Yeah, well, he wasn't too bad either. Lucas's voice is fully devolved into grumbling, and I can tell he's trying to hide the little signs of a smile. He looks embarrassed by it. I really like that place. I'm glad that Ori took us there. Everyone's so welcoming. I'm glad, and you're making more friends. Look at you. You said you wouldn't be able to make any, but you suddenly have a lot. It's all because of you. I don't think you give yourself enough credit. A hand grips my wrist, and I nearly stumble before my before finally catching myself. I was gonna, I was going to whirl on Lucas to ask what's going on, but I can feel from the slight tremble in his hands that this might be some. This might take some tact. Hey, Wallace. Hmm. I turned to the fox, only to catch him refusing to make eye contact with me, his pupils darting around. His entire face looks lit up like a campfire, and he keeps and keeps nervously gulping. 
It's cute, and it's beginning to make me feel a little nervous as well. What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing is wrong. I just... I wanted to thank you for taking me there again. I had a good time. We should go there again. Even with all the loud people. They're not too bad. I just don't want them pressing up against me. It was only Ashley, and it was one time. She stopped as soon as you asked her to. It's much better than the meathead, though. Though, he doesn't really invade my personal space, either. We reach the doors to our apartment building, apartment building. That, but instead of entering, we just stand a few feet away from the auto, from the automatic sliding doors. Neither of us wanting this night to end so soon. Am I the problem? Huh? All these people are trying to be nice to me, but all I do is ruin everything. I don't mean to make everything so bad. I just, hey, stop that. Stop what? Stop talking about yourself like that. You're talking like you're some kind of burden or a bother to us. You're not. One of our friends, and we like having you around. All of us do. But I'm not. It's not just our little group, too. You have Kostia, who wants to be friends with you again. There's everyone at the cafe as well. They genuinely like you as well. They shouldn't... It's not fair. Ugh. Sorry, I just got up. Not to them or you. You deserve to have friends, and they deserve a chance to have you as theirs, don't you think? He's silent after that and just stares at the ground. There's no one coming in and out of the building at the moment, which is a blessing. Our only company are the cars driving by. There's no immediate denial, so that's a good sign. Eventually, he raises his head to meet my eyes. There's an uncertainty in them that makes me nervous. How did our day end up like this? Why do you care so much? Huh? What do you mean? <sighs> You're always trying to reassure me and keep me company. Why? I'm nothing special, only a burden. The others are more, the others are more worth your time. Um, that makes my throat dry and tighten. I don't think Lucas realizes how, unlo how loaded of a question that is. That is because the answer will have more repercussions beyond just this conversation. I really enjoy spending time with you. I haven't really met anyone like you before, and I'd love to spend more time with you. Really? Of course. Why would I lie? He doesn't give me an answer. Instead, he near tackles me as he wraps me in his embrace. I'm barely able to wiggle my arms out of his grasp to reciprocate. While the autumn winds aren't too cold, they still have a chill to them. But the body against me feels like my own personal personal heater. It's both soft and warm. We both stand there with only the sounds of the cars racing by. Nothing interrupts us, and it feels like time is slowing down, stretching what is likely less than a minute into something much longer. I feel Lucas's shuddering breaths against my neck from the light dampness here, and I can tell he's crying. But our statuesque pose is broken by Lucas as he looks up with a sniffle, and it puts our faces right next to each other again. I can even feel his breath against my lips. This fox puts the temptation of the devil to shame. <laughs> hmm. There's a longing in his eyes that but he seem but he makes no such but he makes no move to push any further, but he also makes no move to pull away. He seems conflicted. I've never been more sure in our mutual attraction than this exact moment, but he did mention last night that he wanted to ignore what happened. I know Lucas told me to forget about it forget about it, but I can't get that memory of his lips against my own out of my head, especially the electricity when he pushes deeper against me. It's not the reason I prefer hanging around with him. It really isn't. We just click in a way I've never done with anyone else, and I want to experience it as much as possible. But this feels like the last moment for me to say this. If I don't, I'm accepting his offer to just ignore everything and move on. I don't want that. If he doesn't want it, then he can just say no, and we can both move on move on from this whole awkward situation that would put a hormonal teenager to shame. Need feelings. Taking the leap, I leap forward. I lean forward and press her lips together. There's a moment where the fox's body tenses up and I'm worried I make an awful mistake, but that barely lasts a second before he melts against me. It's not long after that he presses his mouth back against my own and then much more. He steps forward and it's like he's devouring me using just our mouths. His tongue slips between my lips, tracing the outside of my mouth and along my teeth before meeting up with mine. I'm left too stunned to do anything but to be swept away by his current. Not that I want to stop this to stop, especially after he wraps his arms around my neck to pull me closer. It's like the kiss has completely evaporated all my thoughts all thoughts in my head, and all I can focus on is the electricity flowing between us. My hands are roaming his lower back without my brain telling them to do so. My fingers toy with the bottom of his shirt, and I slide them underneath his slide them underneath to feel his soft fur. My claws are slightly raking against the skin of his lower back. He moans into my mouth as one of his hands grabs the back of my head, his fingers gripping the fur on the back of my head. It doesn't hurt and only makes his presence more prominent. It's messy, and I don't know what I'm doing, and Lucas doesn't know what isn't too much better, but it's wild and primal. There's nothing but raw emotions between us. We just stand there, the world beyond the fox against me fading away until it's just like until it's just the two of us. 
I couldn't care less if anyone saw us, and it doesn't feel like Lucas would stop for anything. The only sound ringing in my ears is the little moans that slip out of his mouth as my fingers dig deeper into his shirt. Any noise from the cars running by is inaudible to my hyper-focused mind. All that matters is the fox in my arms and his tongue against my own. Unfortunately, good things can't last forever, and Lucas pulls away. Except this isn't some romantic slow departure. He yanks away from me with a horrified look on his face. Fuck! I shouldn't have done that. I I'm sorry. Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps the channel. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!